In this lesson, we'll discuss how to calculate qualifying ratios for mortgages. And specifically in this video, we'll be focusing on the housing ratio, the loan to value ratio, and debt to income ratio. All of these play a major role when it comes to deciding whether you get a mortgage from your lender. We'll start with question number one, which deals with housing ratio. The question reads, if Sherry has total gross monthly earnings of 5,893, and the total mortgage payment, which the formula refers to as PITI, that's principal interest taxes and insurance for the loan is 1,482, calculate the housing ratio. Is the ratio acceptable compared to what's desired? The housing ratio reflects the proportion of the borrower's income that is dedicated towards housing related payments. Any value less than 28% are unacceptable. The way you calculate this ratio is you take the mortgage payments that the person has to make and divide it by their monthly income. So in this particular example, Sherry has to pay 1,482 every month and we divide that by her grossly monthly income, which is 5,893. Let's see if this is less than 28%. So if I divide these two, I end up with this decimal amount. I multiply this by 100 to get it as a percentage, and we have 25.14. So this would be seen as something favorable in a lender's perspective. In question number two, we are expected to calculate the loan to value ratio. The loan to value ratio is the measure loan amount you've taken compared to the value of your home. The idea here is that when you put some of your own money into a purchase, you're more likely to value it and keep making payments. Values less than 80% are usually acceptable. The question reads, find the loan to value ratio for a home appraised at 583,620 that the buyer will purchase for 585,000. The buyer plans to make a down payment of 175,000. So what we do here is we take the amount mortgaged and since they are seeking a mortgage of the difference between these two numbers, so let's find the difference so we can get the mortgage amount through that. If we subtract these two numbers, we get 410,000. So this is how much they need as a loan. That number will go in the top part of this fraction known as the numerator. And the denominator is the appraised value of the property. The appraised value is 583620. This is the reason why your property gets appraised before buying. This needs to be calculated. So we take this divided by that and multiply it by 100. Or if you want, you don't need to multiply by 100 if you don't want to represent it as a percentage. So this value divided by 583 six two zero we get zero point seven zero two so seventy point two percent approximately I multiplied that ratio by 100 to get the percentage now because this is less than 80 percent this is favorable in a lender's perspective finally in question three we look at debt to income ratio and this is different than Question number one, where we asked for the housing ratio, the debt to income ratio is the mortgage plus all those other payments that you need to make, such as the water, heating bill, property tax, and so on. And anything less than 36 is what's favored. The maximum is 43 for most comfort levels of lenders. So let's read the question. Find Julia's debt to income ratio if her fixed monthly expenses are 1,836, and her grossly monthly income is 4934 So this includes her mortgage payments plus everything else. Like as I mentioned, car payments, taxes on the property, and so on. 1836 divided by 4934. 1836 divided by 4934 gives us a value, a ratio of 0 0.37, it's a little higher than most lenders' comfort zone, but I think it would be acceptable in this case. So we have 0 0.37 or 37% represents the debt to income ratio. 
And so there you have it. Three different measures that banks take before you are qualified for a mortgage on your home.